Hello, hello. Welcome back to the story behind the story. My name is Sierra Melker. I am the founder of Red Thread Publishing. This is the podcast interview series where we invite female authors to come and share all the stuff that nobody else knows about how their stories come to be created. It is designed to inspire and inform aspiring authors and new authors to really take the action that needs to happen to go from having a story you have always wanted to tell to actually doing the writing pen to paper and then publishing your book so that you are transformed and the world's trans transformed by your story. Shrada Nyati is our guest. I got your name. I got it. I'm practicing pronunciation. Okay. Well, that's all I had to do is pronounce your name right. That's it. Thanks for attending our podcast. Peace out. That's always the hard part, right? The very beginning is always the hard part. Shraddha, I'm so glad that you're here. I'm so glad that we connected originally, and it's my pleasure to have you with us today. Can you introduce yourself? Because I always know individuals can do that better than my just monotone reading your bio. So who are you today? How do you want to be known? It's all yours. Welcome. Hi, Sierra. So as you pronounce it well, my name is Shraddha. I am professionally a forensic scientist. I have worked at a university as professor and head of the department, but that's all academics. As of now, I'm a founding member of an AI powered platform called Genius Insight. So there we uh, transform potential to performance and you know tap all the genius that is there within us. And I have been writing since, I guess, my school days. Like I started writing with diaries, then letters to my friends, and that is how my journey started. And eventually, there was a story that I needed to tell the world, maybe, <laughs> or tell to that one person. <laughs> <laughs> That's where it started. That's how my first book came along. Mm. And then I realized my mistake then. <laughs> That's not how it's done. <laughs> and then, you know, I have, uh, I'm a big daydreamer. I I have so many imaginations that I just get lost in. And mm. that's how this second book came along. And yeah, that's all about it. I love it. Okay. Um, because every time I'm talking to an author, I want to make sure that she brags sufficiently. Will you please tell us the names of your books? All the links and all of that jazz will, of course, be in the show notes and stuff. But brag and tell us the names of both of your books please all right so the first book that i wrote was it's from ring to mirror it's about the journey that you take when you move out from your parents house you move to hostel your college life how you form bonds with your friends how you fell in how you fall in love and how these important relations change with time how mm -hmm. you mature and how these relations mature with respect to each other and with respect to the people who are involved. Mm. So that is what the first book what was about. It's available on Barnes and Nobles, Amazon globally, and uh, it's there on uh, almost all the <laughs> online sites. Right. Yeah. Then the second one is called Lobster, which is derived mm. from the famous Friends sitcom where Phoebe says like lobster is made for life, <laughs> where he relates to Ross and Rachel. Yeah. So this book is about the same thing. Like, even if you lose love, if you have hope, if you hold on to it, years later, or maybe, you know, months later, years later, you always fall back to that emotion, to that feeling. It always finds you basically, if you have that hope in your heart. So this book is about second chances, about healing your heart. When you know you are vulnerable, but you have that very strong exterior because you have been broken in love once. Mm. So this is about giving yourself that second chance, giving love that second chance. Mm. Doesn't it feel good to say that much about your stories? Of course. I write books. No, but these are the things that, it, because um, both of your books are considered romance novels, right? Yes. Okay, so you're writing fiction. Um, what I was really struck by when I first started reading your second book was, you know, it, I when you open a romance novel, you sort of, I, I think I know what I'm going to get, right? 
and and I like that yours keep me on my toes a little bit more. I think of them as um, profound, actually, Thank profound you so romance novels. That where there's, a lot. <laughs> there's more. There's more in there than just somebody with a really sexy bod falls in love with somebody who's you know also lovely. You're like, come on, okay, I've read that one. I want to read something else. Sure. Um, I have questions for you as I always do, but something I just noticed and I wanna highlight is when you were introducing your books, you were like, yeah, so, you know, they're available on all the platforms globally. Like it's not a big deal <laughs> because you've already done it, right? You're on the other side of this massive lifelong dream. And you're like, oh yeah, you know, I've wrote, wrote some books. <laughs> Um, and I just wanted to, we don't have to dig into it too much, but I wanted to point it out that when you're looking up at a goal, it seems impossible and big and like, you know, your whole life is going to be different on the other end. And then there's two choices. <laughs> One is to just continue to look up and like not do anything because it seems so impossible. The other is to actually move towards it. Mm -hmm. But what I definitely experienced, and I hear a lot of other women sort of go through the same process, whether they mark it as such, as soon as you accomplish that impossible, big, life-changing <laughs> dream, you're like, oh yeah, but it's still just me, and it's not a big deal. Once we're looking back on those same dreams, we're like, yeah, yeah, you know, I did that <laughs> stuff. Um, I know so many women that are like, oh yeah, I have a PhD. I'm like, I've known you for years. I had no idea you did this amazing thing because you haven't bragged about it enough. And you're like, oh, well, that's not a big deal. And I was like, it was for a long time a big right. deal. So yeah. let's make it a big deal again. <laughs> um, so actually the thing is, see, there is, a, there is a huge difference between writing a book and then publishing it or marketing it. Yes. So yes, of course I want people to read my book to feel those emotions but I believe I am more invested in you know putting my art out in writing and expressing that is a priority for me like even if like I haven't signed a you know six figure book deal or something but that's not important for me for me what is more important is I'm writing books and I want to write books for as long as I can so yeah, maybe that's why I was like a little bit like, okay, I have published a book, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have that be sort of where we dig in though, because, so I always ask what advice, insight, encouragement do you have for aspiring authors and, and, and newer authors? Um, you just said the part of this process that I love is the creation. Yeah. And I think that's really important because authors these days, probably more than ever, need to, or in one way or another, are asked to be a part of all the other parts of a book. Yeah. Um, that if you just wanted to like live in a cabin in the woods and write your stories, they'd probably never reach the people who need them. That's true. Even with, you know, traditional publishers or um, any other variation of publishing, self-publishing for sure, the author has to do a lot of other things that are maybe outside of their skill set. Um, cover design and proofreading and marketing and like all of some people, some authors I know love being on stage mm -hmm. and love talking to audiences and other authors are like, no, I hate it. That's why I write. So I never actually have to speak to a, a person in the flesh because it freaks me out. Um, but we sort of all have to ha know what we're good at and what we love. But I, I'm going to go out on a limb and see if somebody disagrees with me, go rage in the comments and that's fine. But I don't think it's possible to, to create books these days and not be a part of all these other things um, and sort of have to get good at stuff that 
you never wanted to be good at. <laughs> You're like, I don't want to know about SEOs and rankings and keyword searches. I don't want to know. But you're like, well, if you want people to find your book and read your book. That's true. So I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to let you share um, what advice, what support, what encouragement did you, your younger self need? And what would you say to somebody who like you wants to write and maybe hasn't taken that first couple of steps first? Um, so every single person who wants to write or who does not even want to write, I mean, it's all about writing is all about expressing what's there in your heart. It does not need to be amazing. It, it does not need to have any adjective attached to it. You know, mm -hmm. whatever you feel, you just have to write. And the best part about writing is you do not have to be judgmental about your own emotions, you know, because in everyday life, we do or we think we express so much on the basis of, you know, how people will perceive it, how people will judge me. And writing is one way to express yourself without judgment, without any filters. So this is one of the biggest thing I always tell everyone, like just write, you know, you do not have to sound perfect. You do not have to sound all philosophical. You just have to write, you know, and if it's there in your heart, it will come out like in all in both my books. One thing that everybody tells me is like, we do not need to have a dictionary when we read your book. It's mm -hmm. easy. It's free flowing. And that is really good, you know, because there are so many good books, but the moment there is a difficult word or a difficult, you know, metaphor or something, the flow of your emotions, it breaks, you know, and emotions are pretty simple. Everybody has that. So one thing for me that is important is, just go with the flow. Do not need to have those big words to make it really, to make it sound good because emotions and feelings, they are enough to express yourself, to write. So that is one thing. Another is, of course, like read, read as much as you can. It necessarily not be uh, books. You can read anything, you know, there are blogs, there are magazines, there are articles those little, little snippets that people post on Twitter, on Instagram, just read. The more you read, the more you will know how the world works, how people perceive emotions. And the other thing is experience life, mm -hmm. interact as much as you can with people. The more you go out, the more you meet with people, the more you will have perspective. You know, you'll have, you'll have that ability to see the world through different eyes and like I love traveling and there are so many times when traveling inspires me to you know it's not about travel but about the feelings that you get when you travel and when you meet all these different kinds of people you realize how many different lives are there throughout the world and on a generalized level they're all very different. Everybody has its own problems. Everybody is going through its own life, life uh, achievements. But if you go down to that deep level to the, you know, your heart, your soul, everybody wants to be loved. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to be surrounded by people they care about. And that is what is the heart of any book. It's emotions, pure emotions. So yeah, meet as many people as you can explore as much as you can just experience life that's all and that's it read write and live oh my um i have a friend who's who's a, a young adult fiction writer and she has a little book like a little notebook and everywhere she goes she's always listening she's like writing down little things that she observes or phrases that people she's like can you say that again and she's like tick, 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 <laughs> you know um she's like one of my characters is gonna say just that that was a weird weird way of expressing something but it was perfect not that active like i do not carry a book everywhere <laughs> stop like, hang on i have to write this down yeah <laughs> i do not do that but yes when i like in this book in, in my latest book i've mentioned how the idea came up so i was actually walking down to a grocery store during afternoon and I saw this guy, he was there in the car at a traffic light and he was just, you know, listening to music. And that is where, you know, I had those imaginations. I started daydream, daydreaming and that's what I was doing. I went to the grocery store. I was dreaming 
I picked up all my stuff. I was still dreaming. I came back home. I was dreaming. I had created a whole scenario, a hypothetical scenario in my head. And that's when I was like, I need to get this out else it will be stuck in my head throughout the day and for coming days. And that's how the story started. I love it. And so to me, that says that you've given yourself a degree of permission that a lot of people maybe they're like, oh, well, it was just a daydream, right? Your daydream turned into a book. Yes. yes. Um, and your first piece of advice is to write and expressing your heart without judgment of your own emotions and even without judgment of your own words. But I think that is so hard for so many people Yeah. because I think it's true for a lot of people. I'm just going to speak for myself. When I read something, certainly growing up, there wasn't Twitter and that kind of stuff. So anything that got, that I read had been edited and proofread and was, you know, close to perfect. And then when I wrote, you know, in high school as a dyslexic person with terrible handwriting and never really understanding punctuation or spelling or anything, I was like, well, I'll never be this, yeah. right? I was comparing my first version to something that was close to perfection. And, and the judgment was a huge divide between the divide between me and being able to take my first draft mm -hmm. and move it towards, <laughs> you know, first draft of my emotions, first draft of my words. And that stopped me. I would say for 20 years, wow. I had actually, yeah, I journaled, I journaled, you know, but I like never, I, I'm in my dad's house. And a couple of years ago, I came back and he's like, you need to get rid of all of this stuff. Right. So <laughs> all of my high school journals, but I had, these were journals for English class and I sort of had to hand them in, but I had stapled like yeah. dozens of pages closed. I was like, this is not for you to read. <laughs> but I was like doing it, but even, and then I just kept it all to myself um, because of that story that like in my own head, this isn't good. Yeah. And, you know, I was right that the first draft wasn't good. It wasn't publishable, mm -hmm. but there's a difference between like good and something that can be molded into something else. Um, and so one of the most common obstacles I hear women express is just that of like, I'm not a good writer, you know, it's never gonna, you know, it's not like the stuff that I read. And I was like, well, of course it's not. <laughs> and that's why this podcast exists is because <laughs> no one, no one, your favorite authors do not write like that. What you read of them is not what spews out of their mouth onto the typewriter or listen to me typewriter like 1970 you know it doesn't come out into the keyboard that way it takes so many people's effort and so many revisions and so much persistence and love to transform you know a first idea yeah. in, into a book um but i agree right but you know like you're saying that you feel that you do not write as perfectly as the authors that you love, right? But I feel there are people who feel the same about your writing. Of course. We, you know, we tell ourselves stories about ourselves. Most of the time we underestimate ourselves. Oh, we need yeah. to change the, those, you know, narratives that we tell we are not good enough or something like that. But at the end of the day, if your writing has touched even few people, I think that's good enough. Agreed. If few people, if a few bunch of people, you know, if they can feel what you wanted to express, I think it has limitless opportunities. It's Agreed. just a matter of time, you know, and of course, everything takes time. You need to polish your art. It's always there, but that does not mean you are not good enough. Exactly. It's, it's just a matter of time. You just polish your skill and maybe, you know, uh, write in a way that people relate to it so that's that's what's uh that's what's important actually right. yeah 
And the only way that you're going to get better is by doing it badly, right? Like you. Of course. <laughs> like if you if you do badly, you'll know this is not what I have to do. So that's one right. thing less. <laughs> right. Um, I love being a parent to a six-year-old because when she was five and four and three, now she's teaching me what I taught her. She's like, well, if you make a mistake, then just try again. Yeah. And I'm like, oh God, how did you get so smart and so resilient? Because I think as adults, we've forgotten our ability to do things badly mm -hmm. and therefore we don't get better. Yeah. Um, and so I love that you've cultivated for yourself the ability to write without judgment because yes. that that's that's a goal for a lot of people mm -hmm. and the way to get to that goal I think is to uh, you know I work a, a lot with women to observe themselves through mindfulness and that kind of thing it's like if you start writing and you feel judgment crashing down on you yeah. just notice that right. and then like then you can interact with that judgment and begin to transform it but if you don't, then judgment wins. Yes. And then you don't write your story. That's true. You don't transform your own life. And then you can't make that impact that you were talking about. That's yeah. so important of like changing one person's life or perspective or teaching them how to feel one person. That's true. And to be frank, I have been working, like I have this idea, I have an outline about a book that talks about things that are wrong in the society like on personal level that I felt all those things, I want to write it badly because I have, uh, you know, written blogs about it, but very, in a very subtle way, but I really want to do that. And I know there are so many people who go through the same thing yeah. and it just gives them, gives them that feeling, you know, like they're not alone. Yeah. Everybody's sharing that same feeling. I do want to write it, believe me. But the only thing that's stopping me as of now is that judgment. Yeah. Like, because when I write, I do not want to have those filters about what my relatives will think, my parents mm -hmm. will think, my friends will think. And when you write that kind of book about society, about your relatives, yeah. everybody, you know, basically, I feel it's very pointed. So that is one thing that's stopping me. And I need to get over that thing before I start writing it because I do not want those filters to be at work when I write that kind of book. Because sure, then, it'll prevent the Yeah, truth. because then I will not be able to express what I actually need to. And yeah. then it doesn't make sense. Yeah. So I'm waiting for that to happen. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think that's a great place to sort of wrap us up because um, a couple of it, there's so many different places I could go. And this, this is what happens on every podcast. And I say this, I was like, we could talk for hours. These podcasts are supposed to be like 20 or 30 minutes. And so I always feel like, okay, we're about to launch into a, like a two hour conversation. Let's crack open a bottle of wine, even though it's like 8.30 in the morning, whatever. We're just going to like hang out. But I'm like, nope, we're going to wrap it up. Um, the two things that I would just want to say is like, we always are working on something. We've all, you know, we, no matter how much we've accomplished, there's always something else where yeah. we're growing, where we're struggling, where there's an obstacle to yes. navigate and overcome. I love that. <laughs> That's my favorite, right? Um, I love obstacles. I'm like, come on, bring it. Bring me more obstacles because the more I, I feel like a, an emotional gymnast, you know, yeah. every obstacle that I encounter, now I can relate to and move on. And so we're just accelerating our process instead of having an obstacle and having that be the end of the story. Like it stopped me. I never made it further than that. It's like obstacle. Cool. I related to it. Next obstacle. Cool. Related to it. Next. And that's yes. the accelerating of our growth. Um, and that's really fun. I mean, it's very hard. <laughs> like obstacles. There's lots of obstacles. Yay. It's hard. Yeah. But it's also really fun. Um, for me, it's a lot more fun than like. Of course, it is no absolutely true. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I have a feeling you and I are going to have more conversations. Of course. <laughs> this is always how it happens. Um, but I, I just wanted to sh to thank you again for, for all the work that you had to do within yourself to write your stories and and for sharing um, some of that 
inspiration and insight with us here. I appreciate Thank it. you so much. Thank you for having me here and for all the amazing conversations that we have had. <laughs> and all the amazing conversations we're going to have. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So much pleasure. Um, if you want to know more about Shraddha and her work, read the show notes. If you are interested in writing or publishing, get in contact with us. This is our happy space. We are all about supporting women to get their stories written and out into the world. Um, oh, yeah. The thing I was going to say is the one idea that I share most often that supports women to get through some of the obstacles is to, instead of thinking about, you know, myself and my story, there's a lot of judgment when it's like me and my story, but women especially do really, really well when we can think about what you were sharing is like my story and the people who need it, right? The things that we're willing to do when we focus on who needs this story. Yes then all of a sudden our, our focus and our inspiration and our attention is like, I am willing to go through fire for other people. Yes. But when it's just like me and my story, I'm like, oh, but, uh, 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 uh. Right. Um, and so if you can really think about who needs this, that is where I find so many women find the inspiration and the courage to say the things that need to be said. Um, yes. that so playing with that too yeah that's perfect yeah thank you so much i gotta go feed my kid and i will yes. talk to you soon and also one last thing thank you so much for all the brilliant advice that you have given me after i published my book that my own publisher could not help me with and believe me those few advice those point advices they have helped me Im immensely so thank you so much for that Absolutely my pleasure. It is my joy. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye. See you all next week. Yes.